G'day there, Ray Corcoran here. So if you were ever curious about what the average Australian has in their super based on different age brackets, then this video is gonna be for you. I'm gonna be going over the most recent data in regards to how much do people have on average and also the median amount that they have in their super based on their age and also their gender. So compulsory superannuation first started in 1992. It was brought in by the Keating Labor government. There was some superannuation prior to that, but it was only made compulsory for pretty much 100% of employers from 1992. There were a few reasons why they started with compulsory superannuation in 1992. The first one was we had an aging population. So that was gonna cost a lot of money and people needed to prepare for that. However, the second reason was people weren't saving enough money for retirement. You know, some people were and many weren't especially uh, women and minorities were some of the most affected in terms of uh, not having enough saved for retirement. And obviously in Australia, you know, the, the government and everybody wants to have a comfortable retirement. And the third reason was life expectancy uh, had been increasing then and has since increased even further. So people are expected to live for around uh, 83 years these days in Australia, making it one of the best life expectancies uh, in the world. So uh, even though people whinge a lot in Australia, uh, we do have it quite good, both in terms of how much people typically retire on and uh, how long they're supposed to live in retirement. In 1992, every business was basically forced to set aside 3% of every employee's salary and put it into a superannuation scheme. And as you might imagine, the small business owners at the time uh, were not stoked on this because they were kind of thinking, well, where this, where's this money gonna come from? And uh, you know, it started at 3%, and then it went up to uh, gradually up to 9%, and now it's actually gonna go up to 12% by 2025. And as of 30th of March, 2022, so about a year ago from the time of filming, Australia actually has $3.5 trillion in uh, retirement assets in the country, making it uh, the fourth largest in terms of how much they have for retirement assets. So it's pretty substantial. And like I said before, Australians are living longer and they also, it might not feel like that with rising cost of living right now, but we actually, uh, compared to many other countries, we have a lot more in retirement assets. And more recently, superannuation has been in the news because there's been a number of proposed changes that are potentially going through at the moment, uh, one of which is starting to tax people more if they have over $3 million of assets in their superannuation. The argument is, well, you've got enough money, why should you continue to get tax breaks? And the flip side of that, they're kind of saying, well, when I put all this money in, which is not easy to get back out, it's kind of a bit frustrating that you guys, I put all the money in, you know, it's grown or whatever, and now you're gonna change the rules on me and tell me that now I'm gonna get tax potentially going from 15 to 30% on that money. So it's a pretty stamp substantial amount of money potentially in extra tax. So some people are a bit upset about that. I don't have $3 million in my superannuation just yet. I am working on it. So it's a problem for down the road. And there's also been a number of other changes that have been proposed for super. So it's been uh, very, very contentious. For me personally, not that anybody asked, you know, I've never been a big fan of super. Um, I do like the tax breaks. For me, I don't see why it has to go to 12%. I'd rather it just maybe sit at 10% and stay there. I don't see the reason why I need to keep putting more and more money in there. I'd rather have a bit more control personally over what I invest in. And yes, you can control what you invest in in terms of your super to some extent. Uh, one of my gripes with super is for the average Joe, um, I find, you know, for some of the, the super funds that I've been a part of in the past, it's been very, very unclear that like the dashboard that you log into online, it's very unclear about like what I'm actually invested in. You have to click like seven or eight different pages to get through to just some basic information about your portfolio. Even when you set it up, they ask you a bunch of vague questions and they just spit out some random pre-made portfolio. And yes, you can get self-managed super, but that also has some downsides in terms of extra compliance and management costs. And you need to have over a certain amount of money, say 200, $250,000, most people say, to make the most of that. For me, I've had a bit of a love-hate relationship with super. The concept of super is good, forcing people to set aside money for retirement. I think that's great for the average person that may struggle doing that themselves, but it also gets to the point where it's like, just give me my money, let me do what I wanna, you know, if I wanna blow out of the casino, let me do that. What we're gonna go over is the average and median. The average can get skewed by some outliers, so the median is probably a bit more of a useful indicator of what the typical person in that age bracket has. And we're also gonna break it down by male and female because the amounts that they have can actually vary quite a lot. Uh, throughout their lifetime. And sometimes they have quite a similar amount and other parts of their lifetime, um, you'll see in the stats that it can uh, diverge quite a bit. So we're gonna talk about why 
that may happen as well. And if you like poly research videos, please consider subscribing. We do weekly videos on personal finance, making money, investing money, saving money, all that good stuff. And just to keep it simple, I'm gonna round the numbers up a bit because there's no point in me going down to individual dollars. I'll put the exact dollar amounts on the screen. Uh, and this is Australian Bureau of Statistics actual data. The most recent complete data that they had was around 2019. So uh, they do release data for, you know, from time to time, but they don't do this every single year, unfortunately. And it's actually really, really hard to find accurate data on this sort of stuff. I don't know why it's so hard. And a lot of other blogs, if you search online, a lot of them have kind of model data or projections based on kind of the trend it was already going on. So finding accurate data on this is actually weirdly hard. But with that said, we'll go over the most recent complete data and you can sort of compare where you're at versus is what the averages are and the median is. So for median um, males under 18, it's around 360 bucks, whereas females, it's $180, kind of a negligible difference at that age. Of course, we don't expect much in super uh, under 18. You've probably done a few paper runs, maybe working a bit at Macca's, so there's nothing significant there. For 18 to 24, the men have around 4,100 median and uh, women have 3,700. So still relatively similar at this point, no massive divergence just yet. 25 to 29, again, still very similar, 17.5 to about 17,000 for women. Now 30 to 34, um, a little bit of divergence starts to happen where uh, the male median uh, super balance at that time is 38,000-ish and women have around 32,000. 35 to 39 is where stuff does start to diverge even further with a median super balance of 65,000 for males and 50,000 for women. So you can start to see the gap is widening at that point. This is a, a pretty obvious one around why it's starting to diverge as well. You know, many women at this point are taking time off to have kids if they haven't already, and a lot of males are still in the workforce. And this is a huge topic in Australia about how do we help women ensure that they still don't left, uh, aren't left behind with their super as they go through life. And towards the end of this video, I'm gonna show an interesting stat around um, how super balances turn out by the time people are at the end, you know, towards the retirement age and beyond. So 40 to 44, uh, the men have 92,000 and the women have 65,000. So again, the gap is quite wide at this point. At the age of 45 to 49, a lot of people are starting to get into their peak earning years at this time. Um, the males at this point have a median super balance of 118,000 and the women um, have a super balance of uh, quite a bit less by this point, which is $80,000. At the age of 50 to 54, we have the males with a median super balance of 139,000 and the ladies at 92,000. Now 50 to 59, that age range is where things start to get interesting. This is where, according to this batch of statistics, where the biggest divergence is and the biggest gap and chasm is between uh, men and women in terms of their median super balance. Men at this point have a median amount in their super of 162,000 and women have a balance of only 109,000. So it's almost $60,000 difference by this point, which is pretty substantial. And you can kind of understand why people are starting to think about proactive ways that they can sort of balance the scales. Now, as we get into the retirement years and we're starting to approach retirement from 60 to 64, the men have a median super balance of $178,000. Well, the women actually catch up a little bit here and close the gap that was noted in the previous age range and they end up having $137,000 uh, in their uh, super, you know, in terms of the median amount. Now, one interesting thing happens here from 65 to 69. This is the, I guess, the retirement years. Most people are retiring around 65 or 67 in Australia. Um, one interesting thing that happens here is that the female uh, median super balance actually does catch up. So uh, if anyone here is smarter or finds out why that's the case, I thought that was quite interesting while researching this video. Uh, males have $189,000, but ladies actually come back and have $180,000. So there's so many uh, articles online about how women have less in super. So, um, you know, I couldn't actually find uh, like what the reasoning is. And if you do know, please let me know in the comments around why some women can have such a disparity around like the 50 age range, but then by 65-ish, uh, they actually do catch up with super. I'm not sure it's, you know, if it's their partner giving extra contributions at that point or them taking money out, or I, I have no idea. I thought that was quite interesting because that kind of goes against everything I hear in the media around um, you know, how much the, the difference is between men and women. And this is official 
uh, you know, ABS statistics. So this is, you know, it's not just some blog posting about it. So very, very interesting here and something I did not expect to find uh, while researching this video. From the ages of 70 to 74, uh, this is where super balances do peak. Obviously people start to draw down the funds after a certain point. The men at this point have a median balance of $195,000 and the ladies have a median balance of $188,000. So relatively the same at that point. Now at the age of 75 or above, obviously the funds are starting to go down at this point. Men have a median super balance of $144,000 and ladies have around $139,000. So overall, it's pretty interesting to see how, you know, early on up until about 30, there's no, no dramatic divergence. Then from about mid thirties to 50, it starts, the gap starts to get quite wide. And then according to these statistics, which are the official statistics, it does come back and taper in towards the end, which is definitely something I did not expect to see. Uh, maybe there's some reason that I am not aware of. I would love to hear if anyone has what, if they already know what the reason is, but it is interesting to see how much people have in their super balance. For me, I don't personally go too much off averages or median. I'm still gonna do what I'm gonna do regardless of whether the median, if the median was a million dollars or a hundred grand or 50 grand, it doesn't really matter to me because the, the solution is still work a lot, save your money, invest your money, rinse and repeat, you know, don't spend money, all that obvious stuff. So the game plan doesn't really change regardless of where I'm at with my career. Either way, the game plan is gonna be the same moving forward. So I would encourage also people not to get down if it, you know, if you're under the median amount at this point, or even if you're over, don't get too big of a head. Obviously we have uh, peaks and troughs in our careers. So maybe you're, you know, you're killing it now, maybe down the track your industry slows down. It can be great. There's so many tax advantages of contributing extra money to super. I do kind of get frustrated with the limitations around it, but it is what it is. Hope you found that video useful. If you have any questions, thoughts, comments, please leave them below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.